Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm going to be talking today about physical sensors for biomedical applications. And since this is an invited talk, I decided to be a little bit uh, different. So at the beginning, I'm going to talk about different sensors, what people are using with these sensors. However, I'm going to be asking you questions about what do we really need to do or what should we be focusing on uh, in our research. So when we start talking about physical sensors, these are the typical sensors that people are looking into when we talk about physics. So these are sensors that can measure resistance, flow, capacitance, inductive, electromagnetic sensors, I mean, photoelectric sensors. So these are the different sensors that are out there and people are using them in different applications. They could be used for biomedical applications or for non-biomedical applications. The topic was on biomedical sensors. So if we take some of these sensors that we uh, shown in the first slide and we start looking into how can we use them for biomedical application, then you can find that mechanical sensors, ultrasound, pressure sensors, these are very common imaging techniques. Uh, radiant or imaging sensors, these are sensors that we can image the body. So you have X-ray, you have PAT, you have uh, SPEC, you have uh, gamma ray sensors. So there are many sensors that are out there that people use for biomedical applications in one form or another. Now let's take the radiant sensors or typically ionizing sensors, X-ray sensors, gamma ray sensors, and they pose lots of challenges, but they are extremely useful. So we have to figure out ways. I think we lost the sound, it's okay. So we have to figure out ways in order to actually use them in an efficient way, not to uh, harm the body, but at the same time to make use of them. Recently, people have been looking into multimodality imaging and the multimodality imaging, these are combining of two techniques. One technique might be good for resolution, the other technique might be good for contrast. So maybe if we can combine both techniques together, we might get the benefit of the contrast and the resolution at the same time. And you could find in the literature, both in industry and also in uh, papers, lots of these combinations and people trying to show uh, are they good, bad. And the objective here are two things, how to make these systems low cost and at the same time, how to improve the quality of imaging that we are looking into. Now, let's take a, a practical example, which is diagnostics of breast cancer. And the main reason of these imaging techniques are different, it's a cost perspective. It's a question about money. If we look for the US, these numbers are based on the US. Now, every woman who is about 40 years old has to take uh, an, a test every year for to check for breast cancer. Now, this becomes extremely expensive for the insurance industry. Now, if you look into someone who's in your family who got breast cancer, then the suggested plan of action is to start 10 years earlier. So if she got it at 42, then anyone in the family should start at 32. Now, is this needed or not? That's a, another big question that people are struggling with. But for cost perspective, we cannot start with something that's extremely expensive. So we we'll start with X-rays or mammograms. And then if we detect something, then we go to the next phase, which is MRI. If we go and then we go to the biopsy and keep going on and on and on. So there are different types of imaging techniques. Each one has a different modality. Each one has a different way of imaging. And each one, of course, has its own uh, pluses and minuses. And that's why the uh, positives uh, go from 134 to 20 to 4 until you find one which is actually cancerous. Now, if we step back, I'm not going to go over the magnetic and the thermal and the mechanical. I'm just going to go back a higher level more into the application side of things. What type of sensors, what where people are actually doing in biomedical field uh, work on? So there is first is the biomolecular detection. Basically, people who are detecting molecules. Think about glucose detection. Think about um, biomarkers for cancer. So these are lab on a chip type applications. Then we we'll go a little bit into something else, which is uh, medical devices. So medical devices, everyone knows about pacemakers, cochlear implants. These are very common and people are using them all the time. So they are actually have a well-established field. You step a little bit further and you hear all about the Bio, uh, networks, uh, biomedical network sensors or wireless biomedical telemetry. So these are people who are actually using the biosensors and they are trying to communicate between them. And then at the end of the spectrum, people are in signal processing, computer science and statistics. They are actually building chips to accelerate some of the algorithms to detect some genes that are out there. Now, 
are these devices common? I mean, pretty much they are becoming uh, standard in our research. So you have lots of these sensors. I'm giving some examples about plus, uh, diabetic control, blood pressure, eye sensors. But more and more, people are also looking into wearable sensors. These are sensors where you put in your clothes and they are not mainly to detect a disease, but rather to for wellness features. Basically, athletes who are actually uh, running around and they are secreting lots of sweat, so they are losing lots of minerals. So really, we need to be careful on monitoring uh, their minerals in their body. And uh, some of the old people, you are always trying to monitor their health. So maybe if they are wearing something that you can detect it. We heard a wonderful talk in the morning today about prosthesis and brain uh, machine interfaces. So these are sensors where you can put into your prosthesis in order to give the feeling of touch. So it's no longer only one way of communication. It's actually a two way of communication. And last but not least, this is becoming more and more uh, industry effective because more for, uh, companies are interested in actually getting into this field and you find like Glasgow and Google, uh, they made this company Verily. There is no product yet, but they are investing about half a billion dollar into uh, lots of technologists that are actually into the way that uh, Google markets it, how to actually make the medical field more into like the electrical field, how to bring electronics and the advances in electronic industry into the medical field. And this is just one of the paper that we actually digged in where you can find that there are lots of sensors out there that actually are different parts of your body and they are actually giving you information and this information is actually very useful nowadays. Now, three examples I'm going to touch on here that use physical sensors. The first one is a smart bandage. Basically, if you have a wound and this wound is big and you're trying to actually uh, re we attach, attach the bandage and put it again. So you need to check the agglutination of your blood. And the idea here is that you don't want to be taking it off and putting it on, taking it off, taking it on. If you have a sensor in the bandage that is actually continuously monitoring the blood, you can actually figure out the state of the wound. And in that case, you can actually check few things. You can actually check the uh, blood, you can check the pressure on the, on the wound, you can check the pH, and all of these are just simple capacitive structures that you have there, and this actually gives you information about the state of the wound, which will help you actually decide whether you actually should change the bandage or not. And then, of course, you could actually add some wireless capability so that you can actually send the information to the doctor. Now, another big application for something like this, people who are actually in bed for a long period of time, so they develop sores and ulcers in their body because they are not capable of moving. So you need some sensors so that you can actually monitor their uh, skin before actually it leads to actually ulcers in the body. Other things that people look into are electrochemical sensors for biomarkers. So they are looking for something like axorbic acid, urea, and this type of stuff. So the idea here, how to develop these sensors that you can wear and you actually continuously use them. Now, the biggest question in these sensors, this has been well-established sensors for electrochemical industry, is how to power them. So you need to figure out how to power them and anyone who works with batteries understand that batteries are big. So you need to figure out a best way of actually generating inner, uh, power in order to put for those sensors. Some of the interesting research-oriented type things, people are looking into putting sensors in the contact lens where you can actually look for biomarkers in your tears. Dental implants. So it has been shown that you can actually stimulate your teeth in order to regrow much faster by actually sh uh, shining some LEDs on them. So one of the interesting questions here is, can I actually couple the LEDs, which is not the sensor, it's actually the actuator, and with a sensor that can keep monitoring the growth of the um, teeth so that you can continuously actually keep shining light on the teeth while it's actually growing. Why are we doing all of this? Because there is actually a big need right now and the big need is that there are many places you, that cannot afford to have doctors everywhere so we need to figure out technologies and these technologies need to be cheap need to be simple people who are like you and me are engineers can actually use them in order to actually get some information to help some of the people living in rural areas and our these systems has to be moving from a clinic which is extremely expensive, extremely big and requires a lot of uh, infrastructure into something simple and small that people can use in their hands and can in point of care or on-site applications. Now, again, these are biomedical engineering type questions. 
so you need some information from engineers how to engineer these type of systems people like us but at the same time you need to work with physicians and biologists and chemists in order to figure out what they are really looking for so you really need to be addressing both sides of the equation and then you actually embark into designing a full system you don't focus on the sensor itself but what people are looking for these days is not the front end sensor but actually the full uh, end basically from the biological question that you are trying to answer to the chemistry or bi biology that you are going to be using to the transducer which is mostly what we do here in this conference to the circuitry that you attach into your sensor and then to the signal processing you have to have a full understanding of the full system and you have to work on the full system is this useful is this important i would say yes right now this is a growing market there are lots of money that's being put into the system and we're talking about 14 billion 20 billion right now so this is something good now mostly the big growth has been going on in the wearable sensors and the strip sensors implantable sensors make nice papers some of them are extremely important like the pacemakers the cochlear implants but beyond that the, the one that's just started coming out are the insulin pumps so but it's not as many as we would hope for are these the only application when we talk about biomedical are implantable stuff like that i would argue also that one big thing that is extremely important in this biosensing area is the food industry more and more people are actually worried about the quality of food they are eating and there is a big need for doing lots of food sensors you might argue that this is chemical sensors rather than biosensors so it wouldn't fit under the title of the talk but they use the same principle so drug industry is extremely important so there is lots of work on developing actually sensors for these type of applications and why is this important there are lots of push for a buzzword iot lots of sensors that are going to be out there physical or non-physical our talk was mostly at the beginning on the physical sensors but the, uh, the bottom line is there are lots of sensors that are out there and these sensors are in the order of trillions predictions in the next 10 years now is this useful who knows but it's going to happen anyway whether we like it or not we are talking about lots of sensors that are going to be out there lots of applications and you will find that even though the medical is not the main driving force for these type of sensors but the medical sensors are one big uh, one aspect they involve wearable implantable and telehealth surfaces so this is just to give you a brief idea about the sensors that are out there from a semiconductor industry which most of the sensors we are talking about in this session is going to be about how to build physical sensors using semiconductor industry you will have to step back and look at the big picture the sensors make a market of 10 billion dollars only now the connection of these sensors to each other is another 10 billion dollar however most of the money that's going to be actually put from the point of view of the industry is actually on the processing of the data coming from these sensors so that's the first clue into what's going to come next is it going to be the development of the sensor itself or is it going to be development of the full system or is it going to be only the processing so that's a big question i ask you all what where should i actually put my money or where should i put my uh, efforts now we talked about the market size but we didn't talk about the margins and this is actually where it actually gets more and more interesting all of us here or are probably most of us are hardware engineers people who build devices people who build sensors the margins of profit in these devices is less than 10 percent the margins in the cloud where you're actually putting this data and communicating it is about 40 to 50 percent the data coming from the sensors the margins of profit there are much more than 50 percent so big question that raises to people should i be investing in which part of the equation knowing that many of the sensors i actually can go and buy them extremely cheap they might not be as good as i want they might not be doing the same functions that i really want but maybe with a combination of sensors that are much cheaper i could actually solve my problem and i actually get the much more benefit financially than that of course there will be always applications that i cannot actually do with the current state of the sensors and then i have to actually go and do the sensors now they are moving away from sensors into systems and this is what we should be always focusing on we should start looking into how to develop a full system not only the front end transducer 
but the sensor, the electronics, and the processing behind it. Because then we are actually moving from sensing into prediction, for, so from sensing into uh, perception. Basically, I'm actually making something, not only getting the information, but making use of the information into something that we call intelligent sensors or smart sensors. Now, the field of sensors in general, if you look at it again, the driving force for biomedical, the talk was on biomedical. It's not a big deal. I mean, like it's a very small portion of the field. Mostly it's manufacturing, transportation, and utilities where are the sensors are making the big money. However, the fastest growing industries is actually lists healthcare sensors or remote sensors into a, one big thing for it. So it's actually growing and it's growing very fast uh, at alarming rate. Now, it's not going to reach these numbers, but it's something that's actually worth looking at. Another thing is, okay, we talked about the, the data and the processing of the data is where the money is or where most of the people are putting their eggs right now. If we actually look into clearly into that, the data coming are machine sensing. Basically, these are type of robotics or industry where you're actually putting sensors in a conveyor belt or in an industry where you're actually making functions or environmental sensing where you are actually monitoring the environment to actually look for biohazard detection and quality of air. But there is actually a considerable amount, almost like 10% of the data is biological data. So this is actually something good. It means that sensor developed for biological application, be it biosensing, being biomedical, is extremely useful and extremely good that we actually should capitalize on and figure out how to process this data. What's next? more and more is going to be something like this where you will have home-based healthcare basically these sensors are going to be extremely cheap and at the same time good enough that you can actually put into your house and you can actually get some information then you could actually have also the same thing for hospitals where you can increase the number of sensors that you can have by, by the bed of the patient and you share all of this at the cloud where whatever magic will happen where you can actually share this with doctors or physicians uh, everywhere where they can actually send the information back to you the question that i wanted to raise in this talk is we need to figure out when do we need to work on sensors and when do we need not to work on the sensor or the transducer itself the picture is big. It's not only the front end. It includes two main components, collection of data and analyzing the data and figuring out which data is right and which data is useful and which data we should discard. Because one of the biggest problems right now that we are facing is that we are actually getting lots of lots of this data from our sensors that are actually not being used. Maybe because we don't know how to use it. Maybe we don't have time or money to use it, but it's actually where, as I said, showed you here, most of the trends or the push from the industry is coming into this side of the equation. Is the data side, not onto the hardware side. With that, I thank you so much. And if you have any questions, let me know.